All right, so last time we looked at how to replace Apple IIc key switches on your keyboard. And this time I'm just gonna go really quick in depth on how to actually take apart one of the key switches itself to make minor repairs on it. So let's get started. Now let's try and do an in-place repair of a key. And to do this, I've got a multimeter and it's just set on the beeping continuity tester and I've taped the two leads together uh, at the exact distance of the pins on the other side of the keyboard encoder board. And so let's take a look here. If we try the A key um, and I press the button, I don't get anything, but contrast that with the S key here where I get a nice key switch. So something's wrong with the A, and so now let's try and take it apart. And to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of tweezers, and I'm just going to insert it on either side of the key switch itself, being careful not to break off the tabs. And then I'll take a pair of pliers, and I'll just lift it out like extracting a tooth, and being careful to hold on to everything. So we'll just pull that out. There's the spring. Here's all the components of the Alps key switches laid out. So we've got the bottom of the case, and this is what rests against the keyboard itself. We've got the top of the case, and this is what all the pieces fit into. Uh, we've got this little metal kind of spring here, and this is what actually produces the click. And here's the spring that brings the key back up once you've pressed it. And here's the key switch itself. And then finally, we've got all the pieces that make the actual contact. So this is a sandwich. And starting from the outside, we've got a brass or maybe copper plate. And you can see this one has the pin broken off. But this is where the one of the pins would go. Then we've got a plastic insulating sheet with a hole in the middle. And then a copper plate. Uh, with a little brass fitting around it and this is the other pin and then finally we have a plastic uh, sheet here and in the middle of this is a little kind of tab that when you press down what that does is actually presses this copper plate through the hole and makes contact with this plate and so that makes the connection between this pin and this pin and then finally we've got another little metal leaf here and this is what actually presses against the little plastic nib when you press the button down. Things that can go wrong with these, obviously your pins can break off like this so that's bad. Uh, you can get dirt in between the two plates and so then it won't make contact. If this metal clip here gets bent too far one way or the other then it may not press down with enough force uh, to press against that. Uh, the spring may come out of alignment, so you may need to fix that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop off the little metal leaf here. Okay, so there's that. And then I'll just inspect in here for dirt or anything. I don't see anything blocking it. Just blow out the dirt. And what I like to do is just kind of separate the little metal and insulating leaves and kind of blow in there just to make sure there's no dirt in between. All right, so now let's just try it like that and see if we can get it to make contact. So this is a little bit tricky, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it up. I'm gonna use the multimeter leads on the other side and just try and hold them against uh, the contacts at the same time that I press on this side on the metal tab. Okay, so you can see it's making contact there, and it seems pretty good. Now let's look at the plate, or the little metal tab here, and it's kind of hard to see, but what I'm going to do is just try and bend this a little bit, just so it maybe makes a little bit better contact with the plastic tab. Alright, so let's try that. 
All right, now that I have that inserted, I will attempt to make contact again just to see if it's still working okay. So I'm touching on the back again. That seems pretty good. All right, so I think we're just gonna go ahead and reassemble it and hope for the best. So I've got the key switch, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the spring here, so here's the spring, and I'm just gonna put a tiny little dab of oil and I've just got a little bit of oil here and I'm gonna put it at the end and then when I insert it into the switch it'll actually stay because it's just got a tiny bit of oil on the bottom of it and then what I can do is actually turn it upside down and the spring won't fall out hopefully so I'm gonna just carefully put that back on top and it helps if you kind of wiggle it back and forth all right, so let's go ahead and try it. All right, so seems to be working a lot better. So one thing to keep in mind, it may not necessarily work the first time, so don't lose hope. Uh, the best thing to do is just take it apart and just bend the little metal plate because that's usually the problem is these just got kind of out of whack uh, maybe offset a little bit and just try and make it as straight as possible up and down and then bend out the little wings a little bit more like this so that it really presses against the plastic nub when the button is depressed all right so we fixed the problems with the key switches on the apple IIc. c i still have one more key switch that i need to actually fix uh, but I'll go ahead and do that and then in a future episode we'll work on the other repairs for the Apple IIc and I also want to install a no slot clock as well as a UniS disc Air. So I'll see you in the next episode.